two of his intimate friends say something until his arrival. They're all here waiting to greet him. First, we'll have a few words from his butcher. Hello, people. I have been Mr. Benny's butcher for ten years. He is a nice fellow to meet. He is as tender as a lamb and a clean liver. All kidney aside, I thank you. And now, his lawyer. I have known Mr. Benny for nine years. I've had him acquitted 16 different times, showing he is upright and honest. I thank you. And here is his landlady. Sure, and Jack Benny has had a room in the house for the past six years. I've lost over a hundred bath towels, but I don't think it's him. He's a good tenant and has already paid his rent for last July. And now his doctor. I am Jack Benny's physician. I have taken out his appendix, tonsils, and adenoids, and that's about all you can get out of him. I'm Jack Benny's barber. I'm his barber. I've saved Mr. Benny 250 times and never cut him once. It's my own fault. I'm I'm Jack Benny's tailor. He brought a suit to me on time, and then his watch stopped. I'll be right home, Ma. I'm Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny's chauffeur, but as he doesn't own a car, I ain't got nothing to do. I'm Mary Livington, Jack Benny's girlfriend. And if all the ice cream sodas he bought me were laid end to end, there would be one. I'm Jack well, Benny. Well, I'm Jack Benny's father. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm Jack Benny. Here's Jack himself. Hooray! For he's a jello good fellow. For he's a jello good fellow. For he's a jello good fellow. Six delicious flavors. Well, 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 well. This is really, is really an honor, folks, finding all my pals and creditors here. However, if you'll clear out of the studio, I'll mail you my personal check in the morning. Yeah, that's what we're afraid of. <laughs> that's good. Hello, Wilson. Glad to see you. Oh, glad to see you, Jack. How's everything down in Washington? Don, you should see Washington right now. There was a bankers' convention going on there. About 6,000 bankers from all over the United States representing billions. Yes, sir, money was as loose as the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> yes, sir, and just think, Don, with all those bankers there, I still couldn't cash a check for $25. Well, Jack, you are well known in Washington. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, say, what's the idea of the convention? Well, Don, they're trying to make it easier to borrow money from banks, and it should be made easier. I don't want to be running to you and Parker for $10 every few minutes, you yeah? know? Yeah, that's no thrill to us, either. You know, oh, I... <laughs> I'll show you what I mean, Don. Look at Take a hitchhiker, for example. He has no money, so he stands on a corner and thumbs to the right until someone gives him a lift. Of course, he doesn't always get a lift, and some people even thumb back at him. <laughs> well, uh, get to the point, Jack. But, but if this hitchhiker can go to a bank and borrow money, he won't have to stand on corners. He can buy a ticket and business is stimulated. Yes, but Jack, uh, how will the bank get the money back from the hitchhiker? <laughs> That's the only thing they're worried about. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, tell me, Jack, are they nice fellows, these bankers? Yes, Don, but they're very careful. You know, when they get a uh, coat room check, they look on the back for an endorsement. <laughs> you know, when they order a glass of milk, they want it certified. Oh, they're very careful, I think. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Glad to see you back. Where were you? In Washington, Mary. We were just talking about the bankers' convention down there. I'll bet it was cute. Yes, it was cute. <laughs> you know, Jack, I don't think money is safe any place anymore. Why, Mary, there's nothing to worry about these days. That's what you think. I had money in the bank five years ago, and there was a run on the bank. Why don't you keep your money in your stockings? What good is that? There's a run in that, too. <laughs> oh, so you do keep money in your stocking. That does it draw interest? No, I wear a long fur coat. Oh. <laughs> That's the idea, Mary. Save your money. Have you got any laid away for a rainy day? I haven't even got enough for a drizzle. Mm. <laughs> well, look at me. I can't even face a cloud. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Parker. Say, you know, Frank, I'll bet Don Besser has got more money than all of us. Hey, Don, have you got anything put away for a rainy day? Yes, an umbrella. <laughs> well, well, Don, where did you get that old joke? It was your vaudeville act. <laughs> is that so, huh? He's cute, too. Mm. And speaking of Jell-O, there is something for a rainy day or any other day. Wilson, who's speaking about Jell-O? Why, everybody, and it tastes twice as good as ever before. Play, Don, everything happens to me. Oh, Jack, uh, you forgot to ask Wilson if he saved anything for a rainy day. That guy, he stood off two tidal waves already. <laughs> that was uh, Don Bester and the boys playing a medley of popular songs. And now, tonight, folks, we are continuing our policy of giving you a new guest star each week. Remember, we have already given you the famous Chicken Sisters, and last week, great violinist Mr. Fett. 
So tonight we are fetching you another outstanding personality. And we will interview the Women's Open Golf Champion. Oh, I forgot, oh, I forgot to, to tell you. you, Upper Staten Island. Yes, it? that's right, Upper that Staten it? Island. Miss Masha Nibley. Thank you. Uh, now, before we go any further, Miss Nibley, you are the Open Champion, aren't you? Oh, of course I am. Mm. I'm going to have trouble already. <laughs> Now, uh, tell us, Masha, what was your latest victory? I came in third in the Saratoga Open Tournament. You came in third. That was very good. Uh, who came in first? Cavalcade. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I played it myself. Huh? Jack, doesn't she look awful for a champion? Oh, yeah? If you were in the rough as much as I was, you'd look bad, too. Mary, Mary, quiet, quiet, please. Uh, now, Miss Niblick, tell the folks what was the longest drive you ever made. 375 yards. Hmm, that's quite a nice drive. Not when you have to walk back. Well, <laughs> yes, there is a lot of exercise in golf. Now, tell me, uh, how are you on the green? Very short. That's why I'm up here tonight. Well, we, <laughs> we didn't stay for a rainy day either. But say, that's a lovely bag and a nice set of clubs you're carrying there. Is this, uh, is this your driver? Yes, sir. And this, uh, this is your brassy? No, that's my head. Well, it certainly fooled me, <laughs> but it would make a nice brassy. Let's see, uh, you carry 12 clubs, a putter, a spoon, and a knife. What's that knife doing in your bag? I use it for slicing. Oh, I have the same trouble, too, yes. <laughs> now, tell me something about your shots. Are all your shots straight? No, I mix some of them with ginger ale. Mm, that gives me a thought. <laughs> well, I wish you'd hurry up. I have a match for the Westchester Open. Well, before leaving, may I see the scorecard for your last match, Miss Nibley? Certainly. There you are. Hmm, you play the first four holes very well. See, three, four, four, three. That's my phone number. There's a score over there. Oh, uh, pardon me. <laughs> mm, very nice. I see, uh, I see you got a birdie 12 on the sixth hole. Oh, that's nothing. I made a hole in one on the 13th. A hole in one? Say, so you got a seven marked down here. Well, I missed the first six off the tee. <laughs> I wish you'd have missed this program. I would if it was on the fairway. Oh. Well, Miss Niblick, I think your little interview has done much to help our game. Would you mind showing us a few shots before leaving? Well, this is a small place, but I have a few trick shots if you care for those. Oh, that'll be fine. My first trick will be hitting the ball off of a watch. May I borrow your watch, Mr. Benny? Yes, yes. Here you are. <laughs> I place your watch on the floor and the golf ball on the watch. Hey, wait a minute. Here, that's my watch. Are you sure you can do this trick? Eh? I never miss. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. Oh, pardon me. Play, Dawn. <laughs> Introduce Frank's song, will you? I'm sick. All right, Jack. And now Frank Parker, who still has his watch, will sing It Was Sweet of You. Thanks, Mary. It was sweet of you. You're welcome, Frank. It was sweet of you to say it was sweet of me. Well, I think it's darn sweet of you to think it For was sweet of me. For heaven's sake, sing. Was... Sweet of you, sweet of me. As long as you're healthy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Frank. Frank Parker singing at the speed of you as he sings it in the motion picture Transatlantic Merry-Go-Round. And now tonight, starting our dramatic season with a large repertoire of plays. For tonight, we have chosen by popular indifference that great English drama of 1845, The Bennies of Wimpole Street. <laughs> this play, as you know, was a big hit in London and was also played in New York by Miss Catherine Princeton. Cornell, Jack. No, Mary, that was a Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Benny, please. <clears throat> this play is also a great screen success starring Norma Shearer and Forward March. I will play the part of old man Benny of Wimpole Street, the mean, jealous father. <laughs> Elizabeth Benny, my daughter, who has been confined to bed for years with an imaginary illness, will be played by Mary Livingston. Frank Parker will play Browning, the poet. Don Bester will play Captain Cook. And Don Wilson will advertise Jell-O. That you can be sure of. <laughs> Don't forget, I played Charles Lawton's part, the mean father, you know. The part of the dog, Flush, will be played by anybody up here that can imitate a dog. 
And from the looks of the cast, you will hear plenty of barking. <laughs> As this is a sellout play, folks, grab your seats close to your radios, and we'll go on immediately after the next number. Lay down, you hear me? <laughs> to a wealthy widow played by Don Bester and the boys. And now for our dramatic offering, The Bennies of Wimpole Street. The first scene of our little play is Wimpole Street in the year 1845. <laughs> a nice quiet neighborhood about 10 minutes from Piccadilly. <laughs> the scene changes to Elizabeth's room in the house of Rothschild, or Bennies, on Wimpole Street. Curtain, music down. I want to go back to my little brass shack in Kiawaka to Hawaii. Oh boy, do I feel rotten. I want to be with all the Connie down with me that I knew long ago. Finey, Finey. Yes, me lady. Papa won't let me go out of the house. So get me a copy of Browning's Poems and a cheese sandwich. Yes, me lady. Mustard on the sandwich. Yes, but not on the poems. <laughs> Who was that? Your papa, the mustard. All right, Bonnie, don't forget. Plenty of mustard on the sandwich. Yes, me lady. I want to go back to my little grass shack. Yinky, out to school, boy. Flush. Flush. Come here, Flush. Give me half of that dog biscuit. I'm starved. Good morning, my daughter. Good morning, Papa. How are you feeling this morning? A little better, Papa. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to go out now. How do you feel, Flush? That's good. Woo! Woo! You're too late. Watch your cues. <laughs> Boy, am I mean tonight, but it's a living. <laughs> Elizabeth, you have no business being out of bed. You're sick and I want you to act that way. Get back to bed. you hear me? Oh, Papa, I don't want to go to bed. Then what do you want to do? I want to go back to my little grass shack in the office of the Quiet, quiet. Oh, all right. Where's your sister, Maureen? She's out with a leather neck. Oh, a Marine is out with a Marine, eh? Blankety blank, blank, blank. It was the most enjoyable evening, my dear. Here they come now, Papa. Goodbye, Maureen. Oh, come in for a while. No, all right, I'll, if you insist. Hmm, he's awfully hard to get. <laughs> I want Lizzie to see your nice uniform. What's wrong, my dear? It's Papa. He looks more like Boris Karloff to me. Oh, I do, eh? Come here, come in. Come here. You hear me? Papa, this is Captain Cook. Captain Cook, eh? Well, get back to your barracks on Wimpole Street. Isn't that good? <laughs> Goodbye, my pet. Goodbye. Come here, Maureen. What's this man... I mean, come here, Maureen. What's this man to you? Oh, just a friend. And a friend in need is a friend indeed. I need everything. I want you to swear that you will never see him again. Repeat these words. I will never see him again. I will never see him again. I never could see him. How old are you now, Maureen? Forty-five. Forty-five and running around with men. Go to your room and don't leave there till you're fifty. You hear me? Fine, I can finish my crossword puzzle. I want to talk to you, Elizabeth. Gee, it's about time. Wait till I close the windows and pull down the blinds. There's fresh air sneaking in here. <laughs> What's on your mind, Papa? I hear you are that way about Browning, the poet. What of it? You've been sick all your life, and now you're going to get birth. <laughs> What's the difference, as long as I'm healthy? Well, Elizabeth... I'm going to leave you here to repent. And when you have repented, come to see me. Where will you be, Papa? I'll be waiting up in the repent house. <laughs> you hear me? 
go already, Papa. Goodbye, Flush. Woof, woof. I want to go back to my little grass shack, Yankee Alcatraz. Come in. Oh, it's you, Viney. Yes, me lady. I couldn't get the cheese sandwich, so I just brought the mustard. And oh, me lady, I have a surprise for you. What is it? Mr. Browning, the poet, is waiting without. We'll send it within. Quick, Viney. Yes, me lady. Uh, Mr. Browning, Miss Elizabeth will see you. Come upstairs. <laughs> Elizabeth! Elizabeth, what's that noise? Mice. Well, tell them to take off their shoes. <laughs> well, here I am. Hello, babe. Robert, my true love. Elizabeth, my New Jersey. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you, my dear. I've been reading your poems, and they made me feel better already. I have written a new one just for you. In yon meadows o'er the mountain, autumn creeks or lakes and dell. What's the dell, my love? I often wonder. <laughs> Likewise. And you know, Robert, after reading all your poems, it has inspired me to write one. Yes, how does it go? Labor Day. Oh, Labor Day. <laughs> how did you know? I didn't say anything. Tell me, dearest, do you love me? With all my heart. And you really like my poems? I think you're another Edgar Allan Pugh. <laughs> You said it. For heaven's sake, make me mad already so I can come in. <laughs> ah, my darling, we must be married tonight. No, Robert. You know, Papa will never stand for it. Then let us elope, and I will take you to sunny Italy for your health. Ah, oh, Italy. Yes, dearest. We will get away from that old fogey. Oh, yeah? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Come here. Come here. You hear me? Yes, Papa. What's this man to you? I love him, Papa. Love him. Love him. Do you hear me? <laughs> After 50 years on Wimpole Street, you're edging away from your father. You must give him up. Never. Never. You will give him up. <laughs> hey, you, what are you laughing at? I was just thinking how much better Charles Lawton played the part than you do. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> What's Charles Lawton got that I haven't got? Whiskers. Right. <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yes. Well, he should be better. He's been in pictures for years. He's been in where? Pictures, pictures. What? Pictures. What hangs on your wall at home? My other pair of pants. We have no closet. Get out of my house. You hear me? All right, I'll go. Toodle-doo to you, Elizabeth. And poo-poo to you, Papa. Come here, Elizabeth. Come here. Are you going to Italy with that stale, broken-down poet? Italy? Why, I'd even go to the Sahara Desert with him. Speaking of the desert, you will find the Jello is the grandest dessert your family has uh, ever tasted. And you can get it uh, in all its delicious flavors. Uh, Bester, 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 oh, and lime. What do you want? Play Don. Play. You've been hearing folks say the Jello tastes twice as good as ever before. Well, here's how you can prove that new extra rich flavor for yourself right in your own kitchen. Take a package of raspberry Jello, for instance. Open it and sniff the fresh fruit fragrance of those bright rose-colored crystals. A fragrance that tells you there and then that Jello's flavor is extra rich. Then dissolve the Jello in warm water and enjoy that delicious aroma, like fresh, ripe, juicy raspberries. More proof of Jell-O's luscious goodness. Third and most important of all, taste Jell-O. Dip your spoon into the glowing raspberry red mold. What a treat. It tastes just like the ripe fruit itself. It's as delicious and refreshing as a bowl of rich, ripe raspberries fresh from the berry patch. Only Jell-O gives you this new, twice as good fruit flavor. So look for the box with the big red letters on the front to be sure you get the genuine Jell-O. Well, folks, this... Uh, pardon me. Well, folks, this concludes the third program in the new Jell-O series. I hope you all enjoyed our little offerings, the Bennies of Wimpole Street. Of course, if you haven't seen the picture, the Barretts of Wimpole Street, which is playing around the country, I know you'll like that, too. Well, come on, Mary, let's get off Wimpole Street. Did you hear me? Yes, Papa. But let's go to 47th Street and get a soda. Yeah. Good night, folks. <laughs>
The Selection Easter Parade is from As Thousands Cheer. This is the National Broadcasting Company. WJZ, New York. <laughs> 